Hello students of Dynamics, welcome to this video which is going to take a look at relative motion with slipping between moving bodies. And we're going to focus on, again, just like we did in exercise number one, drawing the vectors and also writing out the equations for this system here. Okay, So the system we have is all based around one single fixed axis pin, which is point C. Okay, so we're given an omega and an alpha of arm CS as they move around point C. Turns out in this problem, both the omega and alpha are going in the same direction. And here is pin S. Pin S connects body SC to body, you can see a little detail here, SUA. Okay, three points on this kind of rectangular rigid body here. And there is a relative angular velocity, two radians per second positive, and a relative angular acceleration, 1.2 radians per second squared. That's negative from the right-hand rule. So we're going to need to deal with those and think about how they influence the overall motion of this outer body. And then there's one additional body, which instead of having basically a slot or slipping on this body SUA, we have an arm. That arm is pinned here at U, so pinned between SUA to this separate rigid body that's also swinging around point U. It has a constant angular velocity of 2 radians per second. Okay, now that's all the motion there is going to have to do with our slipping terms as we get to that portion of the problem. So, taking a look at our relationship between the alphas and omegas, one thing to pick up initially is that we have an additive motion system, not a four-bar linkage. Four-bar linkages have constraints on both ends, typically fixed axis pins, but this has just one fixed axis pin, and this whole body is moving around that one single pin. So, because we have additive motion, yes, we do need to sum our alphas and omegas. Let's go ahead and take care of that. So we want to find our absolute omega. Let's go ahead and write this of S u as a vector is going to equal our omega of S c, our body that's connected to the fixed axis pin here, plus our relative omega of S u relative to S c. Now we can pick up the directions on these from the right-hand rule. This two radians per second is positive from the right-hand rule. We have an additional two radians per second positive from the right-hand rule. So we find that our omega of SU as a vector is equal to four radians per second. And that is going to be in the positive k hat because it's positive from the right-hand rule. Let's do the same thing now for alpha. And so alpha of SU is going to equal, again, same equation, alpha of FC plus the relative alpha of SU relative to SC. Noticing that my subscripts cancel in these equations just like they do for more complicated equations. So the SC cancels the SC, we get SU equals SU. So putting in these values using the right-hand rule, we end up with a uh, value of 1.2 positive radians per second squared for SC. And then the opposite direction here, negative 1.2 radians per second squared um, for alpha of SU relative to SC. So 1.2 minus a 1.2, of course, is going to equal zero. And so our alpha of SU is going to have a zero angular acceleration. All right, so once again, that only takes place or only needs to be done in additive motion where we're adding the motion of the outer body onto the inner body. Now, if you're given an absolute alpha and omega of this outer body, then there's no need to add things together. But if you're given a relative one, so basically relative to point S, then we need to add those together. So on this problem, continuing down our questions, is there a marker point, point P? And turns out in this problem, it's not called point P, it's called point A. Okay, point A on the body is right underneath point R. And so we do have this marker point in this problem is called point A. So looking at our next question, which point would you put on the left side of your equation? There are options here, but I really think that it's easiest to kind of go with one rule. The rule that I really like is putting the point that is adjacent to my marker point. Okay, so my marker point is out here, point A. So adjacent to point A is point R. All right, so we'll write here the velocity of R 
And in these additive motion problems, we're basically building from this pin out to another point here, which is point S. And then we're going to go from S over here to A. And then the final term is going to be R relative to A. Okay, building in this additive motion of one piece onto the next. So looking here, VR, so the first term here is VS. As a vector, we're going to add to that the velocity of A relative to S. And then the final term here, plus the velocity, going to be slipping now between R relative to A. And once again, we can check our subscripts here. We have an R is equal to S multiplying across here, A divided by S, and then also R divided by A. And I'm doing this because we know if we've set this equation up correctly, that if we multiply our subscripts, that we end up canceling everything out. And so S uh, on the top, S on the bottom, those go away, A and A go away, and we're left with R equals R, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's go with those terms. So looking at this equation and expanding things out, we could write that our velocity of r, now in this case, the velocity of r is a complete unknown. So we could say that v sub r, we don't know the i hat, we don't know the j hat term. Both of those are unknowns, okay? So if both of those are unknowns, we need to know everything on the right-hand side. Okay, so on the right-hand side, we can define the velocity of s. Now, the velocity of s is going to be due only to the omega of sc and not to our outer omegas. Okay, so my first one here is just going to be due to the omega of sc. That's positive from the right-hand rule. We're going to cross that into this r vector. This would be our position vector of either, let's go ahead and write it as an absolute, r of s. So if we cross this omega, positive from the right-hand rule into my r vector going from s up to point c, we end up with a velocity coming down this way. So this is my velocity of s. I'll go ahead and map the velocities on the upper diagram, and I'll map the accelerations on the lower diagram just so we have enough room on both of those. Now I'm going to go from s over to my marker point a. Okay, so my position vector here is going to cut across this way. So this would be my r of a relative to s. Let me catch up also with my equation. We said that V sub S is equal to our omega of SC as a vector. We're going to cross that into R of S. So the next term we're looking at now is going to be my absolute omega of SU, which are computed right over here on the right side of your drawing. We're going to cross that with our R of A relative to S. This gives us the motion of point A, or the velocity of point A, collectively with our first term, our omega of SC crossed with R sub S. Now the last term is gonna be the slipping, okay? So just keep in mind that this slipping term here, the two points are never separated by any R distance. They're literally, like this point is re really just picking up the motion as they move away from each other. Okay, so this is going to be not an equation, but just a term, velocity of r relative to a. Now, if you wanted to define the direction of this, you could do that. Now, I gave this kind of a complicated direction here. We need to find some kind of an angle over here, theta. And so if that is the angle of the arm from our axis system, we could draw here a position vector that comes down. This would be my r of capital R relative to U. And if I cross my omega of UR into that position vector, we're going to end up with a velocity which is perpendicular to the R vectors. This is going to be my velocity vector of either R relative to U, or it's also, we can define it as being equal to the velocity of R relative to A because fundamentally we're talking about this same velocity of R, treating it like a fixed axis rotation arm, so it either could depart from point U or A, realizing that po both points U and A are on the same body, and so relatively they're not moving uh, relative to each other, so we're not adding an additional relative term, but we're gonna use the version here of R relative to A because it matches up with our equation. So let me go ahead and drop that in as an equation term. So we could say this is equal to our omega of U R, capital R, crossed with my R of R relative to U. 
So because we had a third body on this problem, we did end up with an equation for this last term. Very commonly, if you don't have a third body, if you just have kind of slotted motion, that often this slipping velocity, this departure velocity, can simply be written in its original form here, which we could have written as the velocity of r relative to a. But in this case, like I said, we had enough information. Plus to note that we had our two unknowns showing up over here on the left, and so we needed to find everything on the right to be able to compute those two unknowns on the left. All right, so that gives us our velocity equation. Let's do the same thing for acceleration. So here is my ghost diagram. All right, let's set this up with the same exact subscripts we had for our velocity. So starting with a point adjacent to our marker point, we have acceleration of point R as a vector. This is going to equal, once again, building from point C, from C to S, from S to A, from A to R. So my acceleration of S plus my acceleration of A plus my acceleration of R relative to A, and I forgot one relative here. This is going to be of A relative to S, right? Not an absolute A, but a relative acceleration of A relative to S. Now, once again, we need to split this into tangent and normal, just like we did for the four bar linkage, as well as adding in our Coriolis for this slipping term in addition to its tangent and its normal. So again, on the acceleration version of this problem, both of our unknowns are gonna show up on the left side of the equation. So let's go ahead and write those out. So our acceleration of R in the I hat plus our acceleration of R in the J hat, since that's what will come out of our I hat and J hat equations. Okay, looking at our first term, acceleration of S. Now there's gonna be both a tangent and a normal. Let's go ahead and draw these as we go. So our R vector comes up. So here is our R of S. Now we ended up with a alpha coming this direction here. So this was our alpha of SC. We also on this problem had a given omega our omega of SC, also positive from the right-hand rule. Okay, so we're gonna end up with a tangential acceleration, AS sub T, which is perpendicular to that R sub S as we cross this alpha into the R vector and end up down to the left. We have our normal acceleration coming back down along this arm. Here's our acceleration of S sub N. Okay, so writing out these terms in full form, we could write that our tangential piece is going to be the alpha of SC, and we're going to cross that with our R of S. That is a vector in that cross product. So there's our tangent. Our normal term is going to be our omega. Now this is going to be the omega here again of SC, since it's the body we're focusing on. That is not a vector term, that is a scalar term squared. And we're going to multiply that times the negative vector RS. Okay, so that takes care of our tangent and our normal. Now the next term we have is going to be based upon from this pin over to our marker point, and so this is going to be my R of A relative to S as a vector. So adding in the next terms here, we're going to have the alpha. Once again, this is the alpha absolute of this body. Now let me go ahead and write this out and then we're going to do something to it. So this is the alpha of SU crossed with my R of A relative to S. But if you look earlier in your problem, you'll see that we went ahead and found this was equal to zero as we had a positive 1.2 subtracting a negative 1.2, both in the right-hand rule. We have no angular acceleration of that body SU, or you could also call it SA if you wanted to. But we do have a normal, so the normal here is going to be the absolute omega of that body, so we called that SU, and we're gonna square that times negative R of A relative to S. All right, and so that term is gonna come back here to the left, so here is my acceleration of A relative to S normal. Now, looking at these final terms, they're all going to be based upon the departure of A away from R. Now, realize in this problem that the path, the relative path of R moving relative to U and A is basically a fixed axis rotation arm, right? So this would be the path of R relative to A. Okay, moving in a circle. And so as we think about tangent and normal, the tangent is going to be tangent to that circle. The normal is going to be back toward the center of curvature. 
Okay, so I'm going to go down to the next line here so that I don't have to be scrolling left to right. And so these last terms will all be related to this acceleration of R relative to A. So we'll start with a little three dot here to indicate we're down to the next line. So let's look at this slipping tangent term. So this will be related to the alpha of this body UR as it's crossed into R of capital R relative to U. Okay, basically based upon that motion of that rotating arm. Now, we found out in this problem that we had a constant angular velocity of UR, and so we um, this, this alpha is equal to zero, therefore that whole tangent term will be equal to zero. Next up, the normal, so this is gonna be the relative normal and so we're gonna add this to our omega. Now, this omega is going to be the omega again of UR. We're gonna square that and put that in the negative R of R relative to U, which is based upon this position vector here. So this is going to be my R of R relative to U, which means that my normal, so this would be my acceleration of R relative to a normal back up toward point U. And then the last term we have is the Coriolis, okay? Now keep in mind this Coriolis is based upon the departure velocity. So we'll look back up here. We found that the slipping or departure velocity between R and U looks like this. This is our velocity of r relative to u. We said it was also the velocity of r relative to a. And so what we're going to do is we are going to cross the body that contains point p. And so that's going to be the omega of this highlighted yellow body which we found out from our computations was positive from the right-hand rule. This is our omega of SU. You could call, also call this, if you wanted to, omega of SA, all points on the same body. So let's review what this Coriolis equation looks like. This is going to be two times our omega. So this is going to be the omega of SU as a vector crossed into the slipping velocity, velocity of R relative to A. So taking our omega, which is positive from the right-hand rule, and crossing it into this velocity. So we are coming out of the screen, and we roll our hand over, putting our fingers in the direction of R relative to A. It turns out that our Coriolis is also coming up along this arm. So this would be my A Coriolis, which matches up, like I said, to this last cross product down below here. So hopefully that was a helpful overview of working through an additive motion problem. Quite honestly, you probably couldn't see a more complicated problem. We did have a few things go to zero, but we had motion um, of body SUA building upon the motion of fixed axis rotation body SC, and then additionally another arm on there, UR, building on top of that. We computed an equation to find the absolute velocity components for R. We also came down below here and computed an equation for the absolute acceleration components of R in addition to drawing all the different non-zero vectors for this system. Well, I hope that this helps you think through these type of problems. I appreciate your efforts and hope you're having a great day.